Good morning and welcome back to the Photo Moment Show. This is the commentary section following up on our little video on Vlog. If you missed that, go back and watch that. That'll be fun. Um, we, For those of you who are here for the pre-pre-show, pre-show, whatever, uh, we're talking about this scammer that I'm dealing with right now. I'm now. He must have been telling his friends because now I'm getting messages from other people. We got one. We got a live one here. This guy's gullible. He'll take your money. <laughs> uh, idiots. Um, all right. So let's see what's going on in the ch- in the. In the chat here. Packy says, do the field monitor app, please. That Ninja Inferno is Inferno price. You know what, man? The price of this thing is a bargain. It really, really is. Remember, you're shooting to ProRes. It's not just about the screen. If you were just looking at it for the screen, then yes, that would be expensive. But he's asking me to look at field monitor app, which I believe, let me double check. I believe that's the one that I already have on here. Um, Let me see here. Field. Yes, I do have that. The creator, the developer, um, emailed me last week that there's a new version that is ready to go. So he's ready for me to do a a look at that. And I will. I absolutely will, because that's really exciting. Um, The idea is that it allows you to see your computer screen on your iPhone or iPad or whatever, your camera screen on your iPhone or iPad. Uh, But if you want to capture ProRes, you know, I mean, that's what this is for. Okay. Um, There was some other comment going on following up on this spam scam thing I think uh, Ryan do I do I need to look at this is this something I want to do on the show okay all right it's not related so we will skip that I'll look at it later uh, Brent says just got the Shogun Inferno nice so the Shogun now does the Shogun Inferno do the 10 bit 60p because I know that's like the Ninja Inferno that was the big deal about that the Shogun is always the bigger one I would imagine it does if it's new I have no idea um but this is, I mean, this this is a thousand dollar piece of hardware, combined with your two thousand dollar GH5 for three grand, you can shoot 1080p, 60, 10 bit ProRes. Add Vlog and you add Vlog to that, and then you can do HDR. It's crazy. I mean, it's really, it's insane. Just, just saying, it's kind of crazy. Um, I'm supposed to have a call with these guys. I was supposed to have it last week. I don't know what happened. It's the uh, uh, to get some final questions answered, but we're we're working on that. Um, let's see, what else is happening in the commentary? I'm scrolling back now in the comments, see what's going on. We're having a lot of fun talking about the scammer earlier. Um, so that's mostly what we're talking about. Um, Trevor says, Shogun Inferno should be nearly identical, but we'll have your SDI connections. Oh, right, right. That's the big thing on the Shogun. You get SDI in there. This is HDMI. Uh, Cobblestick says, the trick is learning how to correctly expose for Vlog to get that consistently right. Then either grade it yourself or get a professional to do it. Yeah, getting a professional to do it is definitely a good idea. Uh, and the, the LUTs, as Bart was saying, the LUTs absolutely help in there as well. But yes, exposing for Vlog is not a, a simple, straightforward thing. You you got to you gotta know what you're doing um, or you're going to screw it up. You're not going to get something good. And this is a part of the challenge, right? If you don't get it right, then it looks bad. You're going, well, hold on. I, I shot in Vlog. Uh, everything should be better. But it's not just... I installed Vlog and hit record. You really got to know how to expose for it properly. And honestly, that sample shot that I showed in the previous, uh, in the real show, it might have been able to ex- been exposed better. I probably should have overexposed it a little bit more, brought it up higher because um, I had I had a lot more headroom. So I probably should have exposed it a little bit higher. So, you know, I'm learning too. I am learning too. Dave's Nature Production says, I found if you expose Vlog a bit bright or grade wrong, you can get pink and blue banding in cloudy skies. So that's interesting. If you overexpose, huh, curious, interesting. Uh, Evtonic says, I should do a tutorial on LUTs and Affinity Photo. Mind blown. Yeah, you can do LUTs and Affinity. I, I will get there. I will. I did like a very brief thing on that a while ago. It is cool. Trevor says, I can tell you shooting B-Log is way easier than shooting S-Log 2. S-Log 2 will make you throw things, really. Um, in case you're wondering, so you got V-Log, S-Log, C-Log, all these different logs. Log is logarithmic. That's just, that's the way it's shooting. S-Log is Sony. C-Log is Canon. I'm sure there's other ones out there. Um, V-Log is the Panasonic one, and it stands for Vericam. And the V-Log that is on your GH5 is technically it's V-Log L, V-Log Lite. It's a light variant of the V-Log that is on the bigger, much more expensive Vericam cameras. So if you're wondering where the V or the S or whatever those other letters come from, um, that's where. Uh, Bart's confirming uh, to Trevor that S-Log 3 is your nightmare. Wow, interesting. Interesting. Bar saying Vlog works best in high contrast scenes. Exactly. No need to use it if you're in an all bright or all dark scene. Absolutely. Although, although Bart, so if you were shooting, if you're shooting a film production, whatever, and you've got a high contrast scene, great, you're going to shoot Vlog. Would you then shoot a scene that didn't need Vlog, not in Vlog? 
and then try and get them to match, or you just shoot the whole thing in B-Log, right? That seems to be a better, easier way to do it. Let me know. I'm very curious what you, what you have to say about that. Kevin says, for monitoring, if you don't have the Inferno, there's some handy false color LUTs out there. Yeah, false color LUTs that you can add onto the GH5. Um, it's great being able to, to see the LUT on the GH5. The, when you're shooting V-Log, you really want to have the, um, the waveform monitor up, which takes up a good quarter of the screen, which can make it a little bit harder to shoot. There are, so you can certainly do it without, you can do it just using um, zebras, but I think shooting with the waves is really a good idea because you're really monitoring everything. You super make sure that you're within range. Um, but, you know, it's all different ways you can do this. Um, let's see here. What else are we going to talk about? Just scrolling back through the comments here if there's anything else going on. Hey, you guys, you, know, you, you drone fans out there, you get any good drone shots over the week? I flew my drone a bunch when I was at my friend's house on the cliffs in Santa Cruz. <laughs> we shot a lot. I'll, I'll put some of that stuff together and show you guys. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. That little drone is so much, so cool. Having so much fun with that little guy. I did a fun video on Friday for those of you dro uh, drone owners who may have missed it because it wasn't a scheduled show. I just kind of, I almost lost it. <laughs> and then I found it and I thought, ooh, the way that I found it, I should share. And it's really popular. People, a lot of people are watching that video and enjoying it. Uh, Bart says, I would probably stick with V-Log for all scenes. Okay, good. Um, unless there was a scene where V-Log would hurt the image. If a scene was extremely dark without any lighting, bad scene, I wouldn't. Oh, that makes sense. Right, V-Log does not perform so well for the dark shadows. It definitely does better in the brighter areas. So that's that's good. That's great advice. I like that. Travis, if, if you want to create monitoring LUTs, pick up an app called Latisse. You can, or Lattice. I'm going to say Latisse because it sounds better. It's kind of like shopping at Tarche. You can use it to create VLT files from any LUT format. Handy. Very handy, because I did. I got a LUT from something, I don't remember where, that turned out not to work on the camera. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. <sighs> All right, I, I think it's nap time. I think it's nap time. The scammer keeps on texting me. He really wants to know. I wanted to know if you got the funds so I can send you the bank account information so you can make the deposit. I'm, just, I'm not gonna confirm that I got the money. I'm gonna say, send the bank info, please. <laughs> Because once I have the bank info, I can hand that over to the authorities. Yeah. I'm having fun with this guy. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, guys. Oh, Cobble 6 says, please ask Panasonic to allow us to output the waveform and vector scope on the GH5 over HDMI so you can see it on an external monitor. To just export the waveform and vector scope, is that what you mean? Because you can, if you export... Um, uh, if you set HDMI to include the overlays, I think that's what it's called, then you will see all that information on an external monitor. But it's basically a mirror. Actually, it's not true. It's not a mirror of it because it does show up smaller on the screen. Um, so you can. You can do that. Let me show you how to do that. Um, Ryan, GH5, please. It is in the backpack. I'll show you how to do that. Stay. So let's just not do that. Um, let's see, I'm going to need this, and I'm going to need to not tangle this up, and uh, Kevin Wright says, also, it's somewhere already, do you have any news on the 1.2 firmware? I don't need that one, it's fine. Um, no, no official news yet. Oh, Bart's asking who won the rib competition. That's a fine question. Personally, I think I did, but I know my friend thinks that he did, but it was, uh, Let's just say that we all won <laughs> over the holiday weekend on, on 4th of July. Uh, my buddy and I did a little rib cook-off. We have different rub recipes, and um, he always does baby backs. I always do St. Louis, and so mine have to cook a lot longer, and they both came out awesome. Everybody was really enjoying both of them. So, I don't know. We might have to call it a draw. I think, actually, there were some consensus that people liked the liked his rub better, like the flavor on his better, but liked the the meat, the rib, the larger, chewier rib on mine better. Interesting. So he's going to send me the recipe for his, and he's going to start playing with uh, St. Louis ribs. Anyway, okay, let's see here. Let's get this thing fired up. Um, obviously, you can see I've been shooting with the big lens again. I shot, uh, shot a bunch of stuff while I was at the cliff house as well. That was cool. Shooting off into the ocean. All right, so let's see here. Put this into video mode. And... Waiting for that to sync up. Oh, probably should take the lens cap off of there. Be a good idea. Uh, <laughs> it's yelling at me. It doesn't have a card. That's fine. Um, put this into VLO. Oh, it's HDMI. i got to turn on the um, downscaling on this so that you can see what I see. 
<laughs> Where are we? Um, into a down convert. Here we go. And turn this on. 1080p. We should be getting a signal out momentarily. Waiting for that to sync up. Yep, it is. There we go. That's up. Uh, you know, I do need a different lens on here. This thing is so big that I can't, I mean, so close that I can't um, see anything. All right, here we go. All right, there we go. That's better. Now, let's switch over to, I have to turn this thing on. It's called Info Display. And there we go. Now that's on. Okay, so, oh, but the V-Log, the waveform doesn't come out. I see what you're talking about now. Okay, so the info display is on. The waveform is on on my screen, but it's not coming out. Okay, so this is the setting. If you go into HMI record output, info display on or off. So this is how I do all of these things where I'm, you're seeing the screen right now. But I've got the waveform on on mine and it is not showing up. So that is what you were talking about. Okay, uh, good. That's interesting. I didn't. I did not know that. Um, interesting. Well, uh, Cobalt 6 is you only see it on the main menu, on the main screen. Only see the menu, et cetera, but it doesn't show the waveforms in vectorscope. Yeah, you're right, Cobalt 6. Sorry about that. I did not realize that it didn't do that. That is that is interesting. Let me just see if there's anything else I can change. But um, LUT HMI display. No. Nope. Sorry, buddy. Um, yeah, good. I'm glad you brought that to my attention. I will ask them about that. But you're right. It does not show up there. Bummer. That would have been cool. Okay. Ah, what's going on? Bart's saying, you guys still got plenty of chicken left over. Well, come on over and bring it back. I want some chicken. I was hungry during the live show. Why does it have to be right at lunchtime? Sorry. It's my second breakfast time. Brent says, did you see Red Camera got into the smartphone biz today? What? Are you crazy? Are you kidding me? No, I did not see that. Well, I guess I got something to look at after the show. Ah, okay. All right. That's it. Um, Bart says, when using the waveform and vlog, then switching on the preview LUT, does the waveform show the exposure without the LUT or the vlog flat image? It shows the vlog flat image. Yeah, that wouldn't do you any good if it showed the vlog a lot. Now, I would imagine if you in, if you embed the vlog LUT, which would be a bad idea, then it would show you that. It's actually a good question. Let's see here. Um, output LUT display on. Hmm, I can't really tell. It's, too, it's not high contrast in here enough to tell to tell me. I would think that it would show you that if you were recording the LUT out, but that would be a bad idea. I mean, you don't, I don't really know that why that's even there. I think I might be misunderstanding what that feature is for because to me it seems like that makes no sense. Um, you don't want your LUT in, embedded into it. So I'll just have to double check on that before I spout off about it. Uh, but no, when you enable the LUT, you do not see that on the waveform monitor. What you see on the waveform monitor is what you're actually recording, which is the V-log without the LUT embedded. Okay, that's it. Um, yeah, Packy's saying, thanks, any updates on that jitter when panning? I think dual IS problems, just a guess. I have not, this is not, I'm aware of this, so that's news to me. And I would say, turn off, make sure that your IS is set to the panning mode because it does have a, a specific panning only mode for, for dual IS, you might want to do that. Okay. All right. I'm out of here, guys. Take care of yourselves. Uh, you know, the routine, don't forget. We, oops, that's the wrong one. That's not what I wanted. Uh, I need to change this thing here. If you are interested in this whole GH5 and LUT thing, make sure that you go and get this GH5training.com pre-order now because uh, it's almost done recording, which means the price is going to go up very soon. So make sure you get it on the pre-order while you can. <sighs> I'm going to bed. See you guys later. Bye-bye.